Hello friends, good morning. Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. Today we're doing ITEL is Vital. If it's your first time here watching me on YouTube, remember to give the video the thumbs up. Below is where you're going to leave me your comments, questions, concerns, anything you want to chat about. And do remember to subscribe to the channel. This is, you're going to get all the latest videos as they go live. And ITEL is Vital. I'm making a nice soup today. No salt because, you know, I'm showing some love to my uh, Rastafarian brothers and sisters out there. So I've got my provision all peeled up, nice pumpkin and everything. I've got the peas simmering away there. Everything is smelling nice here in this kitchen. Remember, I tell food means no salt. So we got to use a lot of nice herbs and, and onion and garlic and everything else to really enhance the flavors here. The other key thing about this dish, if you're a vegetarian or a Rasta, the other good thing about this dish is it's going to be nice and hearty. Along with all those lovely fresh ingredients, it's going to be hearty and it's going to give some stamina in your back. You know what I mean? Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. Welcome to my kitchen. So I have me my Jamaican Kalaloo here uh, down in the other islands it's known as spinach or in Trinidad and Tobago it's called chorai bhaji but I've got some here and this is going to go into the soup. The whole idea about this soup and the whole ITEL is vital is using products and ingredients that's naturally coming out of the land and in my case here what I'm using is from my garden and this is the first one we're going to get here so I'm just going to pick some of this and all I'm going to do is to cut some of the stems so notice I just use my paring knife, cut some of this. I'm just going to get a little bit more because we just need, we don't need too much of this. Because with any sort of soup or stew we make down in the Caribbean, we tend to put a lot of ingredients in there. Since we won't be using any salt, and using salt is one of those no-nos um, when it comes to Ital food, we're going to really need some good herbs to season this up and, and to really allow those flavors to really stand out because I mean to say if you're accustomed to eating with salt you'll find that if you don't use um, ingredients like this fresh thyme here it will be a bit bland so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a nice big bunch of this thyme here I've got some fresh oregano here I'm gonna pick me a couple strands of that and too bad my pumpkin tree here doesn't have any pumpkin yet but that would have been a good addition as well but I did pick up some at the local market here and what I want is a nice scotch bonnet pepper I'm looking for one that's a bit more mature so like this guy here so as much of the ingredients I can get from my garden is what I'm gonna try to be so from the garden here we got the, the freshly picked callaloo bush I've got that hot pepper I've got the oregano and I've got a nice big bunch of that thyme too bad I don't have anything else in my garden here that I could put in it. I mean, say if I was living down in the Caribbean, surely I'd have my have me some yam and dashin and edos and stuff like that. But that's what grocery stores are for. So let's go back inside now and look at the other ingredients that we. I hope you guys enjoyed a little tour of my backyard there, harvesting the the ingredients that I'm growing back there. But here is the main ingredient list, and you can personalize this to any which way you want. You can add chocho, you can add, uh, which is Christophine, uh, you can add some yams, you can add some tashin, you can add some cassava, any sort of ground root vegetables that you have, you can certainly add it in here. And you can also add any sort of herbs that you like. From the backyard, we've got oregano, we've got that nice bunch of fresh thyme. I've got that uh, scotch bonnet pepper. We're gonna be using the whole pepper as it is three cloves of garlic, a lovely piece of celery and celery is one of those things which will naturally add a sort of a salty flavor to the entire uh, soup since we won't be using any salt. A lovely sized onion here, three edos, one sweet potato, a piece of pumpkin, it's probably gonna get about a cup or so once that's all cubed up, two scallions, you may call it green onions or spring onions and this here is totally optional this is just something I like using and this is called um, shadow benny or bandania if you don't have this uh, no worries or you can use some cilantro um, some parsley would work well also in this shadow benny can be found in your local 
Uh, if you're in North America or in Europe, you can find it in those Asian stores, West Indian stores, or Latino stores. It may be called Culantro as well. I'm going to need a nice piece of this fresh ginger. I've got four okra or okra over here. I've got uh, a plantain. Uh, this one is half ripe. Two Yukon gold potatoes. Any sort of uh, Irish potato that you like, you can certainly use. I'm going to need some fresh ground black pepper, maybe about half a teaspoon of that and I've got that fresh callaloo or spinach whichever one you can have I've got that from the backyard as well and again like I said you can add just about anything this is what I have this is what I'll be using today and over here in the pot let me just adjust the camera a little bit I have I think there's about eight cups of water in here and what I did was I put one cup of dried split peas to cook so what I did, I washed it first and then I put it to cook. It's been cooking now for about 30 minutes or so. I want this to cook for about 45 minutes on that sort of a rolling boil. Nice and tender and then we're going to add everything else to there. Additionally, we'll also need some coconut milk. It's going to give it that rich Caribbean vibe, that nice creamy texture and everything else. The richness from that coconut is going to be amazing in this. Um, two cups of coconut milk and you should be good to go. If there's anything I forgot or anything I feel like adding to this as I add it, I will let you guys know. First thing I did was I chopped up all my herbs, the onion and the garlic, and I have it all prepped here. All we're going to do, and this is the split peas, it's still boiling away. We want to start building that flavor base for this soup, so I'm going to add all of these chopped up ingredients directly to the pot here, just so we have that lovely, rich aroma going. We really want this to intensify the entire flavor of this soup. I'm also going to plop in that scotch bonnet pepper. Boom. Whole as it is. We don't want to break that. We don't want too much heat in this. This is all about flavor. Additionally, I'm going to grate in some of that fresh ginger in there. We just want about half a teaspoon or so of this fresh ginger. And this here is a totally optional ingredient, but I love adding fresh ginger to this. And you know what? Ginger has a lot of healthy, um, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Extracts or whatever in it. So it's nice and healthy for you. And then we're going to dose him with that fresh ground black pepper. Give that a quick stir and allow that peas to continue cooking. Like I said, we want that peas to cook for at least 45 minutes or so. Just going to show you guys how to go ahead and peel the edos. The edos may tend to have a sort of a starchy residue which may cause your fingers and your hands to irritate and go itchy. So what you may want to do is get some vegetable oil, rub it all over your hands to form a protective barrier and start working with it that way. And all you're going to do, a paring knife or a potato peeler and you're taking off the sort of top skin here. And if you're not familiar with Edo's, what you can do is go to CaribbeanPod.com, search Edo's. I have a video on there showing you um, some uses for Edo's as well as how to shop for Edo's. So it's a lovely little video. So this is nice and peeled now. You want to wash this. I'm just going to go ahead and peel the other two. The other thing I wanted to show you, the sweet potato, same idea again. You're taking off a thin layer of skin just as you would peel a normal potato. It's fairly easy and I'm going to say once you're comfortable with your paring knife you're good to go. You can also use a potato peeler. No worries in that whatsoever. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this as well. The pumpkin, same idea. It's got a thick hard sort of outer skin here so you really want to have a sharp knife and all you're doing is peeling that outer skin off. I'm just going to go ahead peel everything and I'll show you how we're going to cube everything up. Oh, one more thing. That plantain is very simple again. Cut the stems off. You can do it a few ways, but this is the easiest way here. You want it to be about an inch, an inch and a half thick. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is to cut it into those pieces. Then I'm going to use my knife, give it a small cut down the side here, and then I'm just going to peel back on it like so. I'm just going to cut this in half now and that's going to go into the pot like this. 
in the bowl here I've got the plantain all peeled and cut up into pieces I've got that potato here so all I'm gonna do is cut that into quarters we want nice big pieces this is supposed to be something nice and hearty so all I'm doing is nice big pieces here the sweet potato you can see I've cut them up into nice big pieces the edos what I'm gonna do is going along the center of it cut it in half try to keep all the pieces pretty much the same size so they will it will cook evenly as it boils in this big soup the pumpkin again maybe one inch cubes this is gonna add a lovely texture and flavor to the entire soup here it's all nice and cubed up now we've got, we've got to wash this and the other thing is if you're not using this immediately after you wash it cover it with cool water so it doesn't go discolored it's been 45 minutes the peas is nice and tender now it's starting to fall apart um, the flavor from all that herbs and everything we added in there is nice and oh the entire kitchen is smelling beautiful so all we're gonna do now guys is add the other ingredients that we haven't added yet so in goes that oregano the fresh thyme is still on its stems and everything else just remember when you're serving this to tell whoever is eating to look out for that you may be able to fish out the sprigs when it's all done and all I'm gonna do now is add all these fresh ingredients into here the pumpkin the edos the potatoes everything is going in here the, the plantain Ooh, it's all kind of sweet lovely things going in here one thing you got to remember about this is this is going to hold true for any sort of Caribbean soup or stew that you're doing you will need a big pot we're going to bring this up to a boil number before we do so there isn't enough liquid in here what we need to do is to add the coconut milk to this and you may need to add a couple more cups of water just to top it all off one more thing we've got two more ingredients to put in the soup here and the okra what I'm going to do is trim off the top here discard that trim off the little bottom thick tip and half inch pieces I'm gonna cut them that's gonna go in there the other ingredient we have to go in here is the Kalaloo bush I'm gonna wait till near the end so I'm gonna bring this up to a boil add a little bit more water to this bring it up to a boil and I'll show you guys the steps after that the soup is now starting to come up to a boil you can see little bubbles starting to happen and I tell you adding that coconut milk Hey, it took this thing over the top the smell is totally amazing I forgot something and I know I told you guys I may forget something so I'll add it later carrots I've got here one carrot that I diced up I'm just gonna add it to the pot here as well give that a stir so everything is nice and incorporated in the pot here the only thing missing is that kalaloo bush as I mentioned before if you don't have kalaloo bush you can add a couple cups of chopped up cabbage to this or if you want to add both hey, do your thing you want to add both of them all I'm gonna do now put the lid on there leave a little crack here for it to breathe you want this thing to breathe you know what I mean and I'm gonna turn my heat down to a minimum and let that cook away from anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes we're gonna keep checking it after the 30 minute mark to see where we at give it a stir every five to ten minutes we're trying to get all these flavors infused into all that nice ground provision we got in there and to make sure everything is nice and tender it's been boiling away now for about 35 minutes I'm noticing that everything is getting nice and tender now it's starting to fall apart so I'm not gonna over stir this so what we're gonna do here now is um, cut up that Kalaloo and add it to here so this is what we're gonna do now all we're gonna do is take the, the leaves off the stems here I'm just and as you can see I'm just cutting off the leaves itself all these baby tender leaves here I'm using these are absolutely delicious and I'm gonna say if you want you can use some of the stock but I much prefer all the tender leaves I'm just gonna push this aside and show you guys so now I have here a small little bundle of this and all I'm gonna do is using my knife is cut it into quarter inch strips so you're gonna get like little ribbons off this 
So we got all this nice lovely ribbons here. Remember I washed this properly before cutting it up here. So next we're gonna add it to the pot. In goes all that chopped callaloo in there now. Remember guys, I keep saying callaloo, but some of you may know it as spinach. Others may know it as chorai bhaji. Give that a stir and we're just gonna cook this now because remember everything is nice and tender. We've got a nice thick soup happening here. We're just gonna cook this for about seven to 10 minutes and this will be all done, ready to go. As you remember, I had put in that scotch bonnet pepper in here whole. So if you want, you can do two things. If you want that kick, you want that vibe, that true Caribbean kick A. Burst that pepper in there now, it's gonna flavor everything. If you don't want that heat, because it will be quite spicy, fish that pepper out, toss it out, put it on the side. Hey, even give it to one of your relatives or friends who likes that hot pepper, give it to them in their soup, they would appreciate it. Cook this down now, seven to 10 minutes, and then we're good to go. Remember, if you find it's a bit too thick for you, because it will thicken up as it cools down as well, add a little bit more liquid, you can add some more coconut milk, you can add some more water, whatever is your thing, you can add it here. It's been about seven minutes or so since I added the cut up uh, callaloo to this. Got a lovely soup, this is all done. The bottom is gonna be nice and thick because all that split peas is gonna settle down to the bottom. Look at the lovely colors from the, the pumpkin that's falling apart. We've got that sweet potato. Here's the thing guys, remember that uh, fresh thyme that we put in there? Now you can take the stems, the sort of stalks, out of the pot, discard that, and you've got a lovely soup here. Let me give it a quick taste. Mm, absolutely delicious. This year's Eitel is Vital, a nice Eitel soup I made for you guys here today. You can tailor this to your own taste, so let's say you're not into the whole Eitel scene, you can add your salt in here, and it's rumored, I mean to say, I am not a Rasta, I don't know these things personally, but it is rumored that some of, some Rastas may put sea salt in here, and uh, just to give it a little balance of salt, but I'm telling you guys, this is a wicked soup. I can't put that spoon back in there because I just used it to taste the soup. But I'll give you guys another stir of it. Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure to have you in the kitchen here with me today. I'm going to go ahead and have some of this soup for lunch. Mm, can't wait. Have fun, guys, and thanks for joining me in the kitchen as usual.